Hi you guys, my name is Brittany and welcome back to my YouTube channel. You guys, we are going to have another chit chat, a personal homeschooling video where I'm going to share all of the unpopular things I do in my homeschool. So if any of you guys are new here, again, my name is Brittany. I'm a homeschooling mom to three girls ages 11, four and three, and I am in my third year of homeschool. So you guys, um, in today's video, I really just wanted to talk about some unpopular things that I do in my homeschool that I really don't see many people do. Um, I really wanted to highlight this video today because not everyone's homeschool is alike. And while we do see similar opinions here on this platform, I do want to share that it's other people with different opinions and different things that we do do in our homeschool that is contrary to like the popularity or the popular things that most people do do. And um, I'm going to be really vulnerable and open in today's video and sharing uh, some of the things that I do do. Um, if you, whether you agree or disagree with the things that I do in my homeschool, um, I really don't mind if you want to go ahead and comment and we have like an open dialogue um, after today's video uh, just to, uh, I guess, compare and contrast some of the things that I may do uh, differently in my homeschool from you guys. Um, and yeah, so um, as always, you guys, I definitely love chatting with you guys in my comment section. So <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous, but here we go. So the first unpopular thing that I believe I do in my homeschool that I don't see uh, mentioned that often is I make my kiddos redo their assignments, including my four-year-old. <laughs> yes, you guys. Um, I really feel like um, for me being the homeschool mom and the homeschool parent, I feel like I have to take some accountability in my kiddos' education. And uh, by doing that, I really feel like if I know that they are giving me subpar work or they are not working to their full potential, and I know they can, I feel like it's my responsibility as homeschool mom and parent to really continue to challenge my kiddos and to get the best out of them and um by doing that all i'm going to say is i will make them redo their assignments now for uh leia my four-year-old it will definitely be in more of a gentle way where like we're working on let's say we're working on handwriting and i know she has mastered like a letter and she's just goofing off i will say all right leia i know you know how to do this letter really really nicely uh let's take our time let's make it nice and pretty one more time and uh that's kind of like how i will encourage leia as far as my older daughter brielle um typically what I will do to encourage her, I will say things like, uh, Brielle, I know you can do better on this assignment. I know we have went over this and uh, I want to see your best work and I want to see you put your best foot forward. So those are like some ways I will like motivate my kiddos uh, when I'm asking them to redo their assignments. I definitely don't approach it in a negative way uh, where I'm like talking down on them or like yelling or screaming. Um, I just let them know what my, expe my expectations are for them for that particular assignment and I just uh, challenge them to, you know, do their best. And um, we don't hear that often in the homeschooling community but that's something that I do that's I feel like a little bit different another thing that I do in my homeschool that is really really different and I feel like it's really controversial in like the homeschool community is that I test my children uh, particularly because I do have a state requirement to test however I do test on like a weekly basis in my homeschool as well so um, in the state of Georgia I am required to do standardized testing after the third grade every third year how, um, so for me, that means that I have to test for third, sixth, and ninth grade are uh, required years for me to do standardized testing. However, um, ever since my first year of homeschooling, my oldest daughter, uh, Brielle, when she was in the third grade, I tested her in the third grade and I haven't stopped testing her as far as standardized testing uh, since. So she has done a third grade test and a fourth grade test. And I plan on uh, doing a standardized test at the end of her fifth grade year as well. Um, I just find personally that standardized testing is very helpful for me as the homeschooling mom to see the areas that Brielle has uh, grown in and to see the areas that we still need improvement in and I feel like our day-to-day -day, while I do have like a closer eye on things because I am working with her one-on-one -on -one, is certain things that I may be unaware of that we do need to work on and those standardized tests at least for me they're so beneficial um since my daughter was public school from k and then half of second because of the pandemic um she is actually already used to uh, standardized testing in her public school they did the map test and they did that quarterly so 
um, when we transitioned to homeschool and did standardized testing in our homeschool, it was just something she was used to. Um, when we do do standardized testing in our home, I just make sure uh, we don't do anything else that day, but you know, her taking a test and uh, she's free the rest of the day. And um, like I said, it really helps me. Now, as far as like a weekly and a monthly basis in my homeschool, I do test both of my kiddos, my pre k -er and my kindergartner. For my daughter, Brielle, we do a mixture of written and oral tests. So for uh, things like math, she gets a test after she completes each lesson in math and it really helps me gauge and see the problems that she is um, really understanding and the concepts that we need a little bit more practice on and um, math I'm sorry it's just like I feel like even with my younger kiddos uh, if the curriculum offers a math test I'm gonna give it to them just because um, I really think it's beneficial especially in this subject to do uh, some form of written test now another area that I do written tests for Brielle is also in our English English curriculum. This is our uh, Building English series from Rod and Staff. I forgot to mention in my last update video that we did pick this back up in January and we've been doing Rod and Staff along with Fix It Grammar uh, since January. So uh, we're working pretty well in this uh, English curriculum and after each chapter uh, that she's mastered, we will go ahead and do a test. And you guys, I actually also give her a great value for her test and let her know you missed two or you missed one. Let's go over this problem again and then I take our tests and I put it and I file them in my record keeping at least for these two subjects is the only portions that she has a written test now as far as her other subjects like history and vocabulary and uh, science I do oral tests so for history I may ask her to recall uh, the specific time period that we're talking about and give me like further details or explanations for science uh, we recently went over the water cycle so I may have her do a oral narration of the water cycle and use key terms to you know explain it back to me so those are ways that I do test in my homeschool so I do do a mixture of traditional testing and a mixture of oral testing now for my uh, younger daughter Leia uh, what I typically test her on orally is her math so we're doing kindergarten math with confidence you guys and I love this curriculum but one portion of it that I love the most is that in the beginning of each week they have this uh, area where it's called weaving weaving math into everyday life and it gives me examples of things that I can do around the house and for this week in particular um, it had us piling laundry so we would do five pals of maybe some towels and two pals and she was uh, correlating I have a group of five and a group of two and together they make seven so those are just ways around the home that I will weave in like oral uh, tests of things that we went over within my uh, four-year-old's math curriculum throughout the week to kind of see if she retained the information that we went over in a really gentle way so um, I really feel like testing is beneficial I feel like I'm really able to gauge and see where my kiddo is at especially for my oldest daughter Brielle I'm able to see if I can just skip over chapters and kind of like keep on moving forward especially uh, in keeping up with the pace that she does work in. Another unpopular thing that I do in my homeschool, you guys, is I don't stop my math curriculum, uh, especially for uh, my oldest daughter, Brielle. Ever since we started our homeschool, we never stopped math. Like all, even throughout the summer, we would do math. Now, when we are on like our week break or our two weeks break, because I do follow the uh, Sabbath homeschooling schedules where we have six weeks on, one week off. When we have that week off, she's not doing math. And between our end of our school year and summer, I give my daughter a two week break off of math but other than that throughout the summer she is working anywhere between three to four days out the week on math um I feel like math is one of those subjects like if you don't lose if you don't use it you lose it <laughs> at least that's how I feel and um I feel like she doesn't have to go through that beginning part of the homeschooling year where she's reviewing order concepts that she went over I feel like because she doesn't have big pauses or gaps uh she still remains confident within a, this subject and um she specifically told me um, she does appreciate continuing to do math because she doesn't like feeling uh, behind uh, when she has forgotten some concepts and things like that. So um, that's just one thing that I do do in my homeschool. Over the Christmas break, I do uh, follow the same rule where I will give her a week off of math. And even though we are still on like our break, she still will do maybe two or three days of math even during like our holiday break period. Um, I just feel like it's just really beneficial um, in our homeschool. 
Something else that I do that is very unpopular in my homeschool is that I do have structured learning for my three and my four year old. Uh, now, I really don't know what the definition is for formal education, but I feel like my definition for formal education, at least for the younger ages, is when you are setting aside structured time to work on them with specific uh, things, whether it be through written uh, workbooks or whether you're doing uh, hands on activities. I feel like formal education, at least in my opinion, is when you're set aside in structural time outside of everyday life to teach your kids something specific. And if I put that definition as like formal education, I definitely do that with my three and my four year old. I actually started uh, bits and pieces of formal education with both of them around the age of two, where we would do early math skills, we would do um, letter recognition, and we would do letter sounds and things like that. I started off my kiddos pretty early with those things especially with my daughter Leia because that was exercises that we were doing uh, for her speech she actually learned letter sounds to help her speak fluently and uh, we worked on like a lot of uh, like words sight words and things like that especially towards the beginning parts of her speech therapy uh, and helping her uh, with um, her speech so um, I kind of all the things and the tools that I learned in speech therapy I inadvertently did those things with my uh, youngest daughter Alana who is three now um so if you say or if you would say like do i do formal education with my kiddos i do i feel like it's beneficial i feel like we don't give like our younger kiddos the benefit of the doubt um i feel like it is a happy medium where we can uh, continue to teach them and feed them outside of like life skills and things like that especially if they're willing and they want to learn i feel like we are doing our kids an injustice by waiting to a specific age to teach them that's just my uh opinion um, some other unpopular things that I do in my homeschool is that unless my kiddos are sick, if we um, have a sign for that day for us to do a specific task, especially when it comes to our core curriculums, whether we're having a hard day or not, um, I do set the expectation for us to complete all of our lessons. Now, this is specifically for my oldest daughter. Now, for Leia, I feel like I still kind of can be a little loosey-goosey with her because she still is four. However, I feel like uh, when at least for me, when Brielle hit fourth grade, I really started to uh, put my foot down in our homeschool when it came to completing and finishing off our core work, especially even um, if she was having a hard time with the lesson. Um, I think I talked about this and I mentioned this in my unpopular homeschool opinions, but um, like I said before, I will take breaks in my homeschool, especially when we have hard days. Um, we not we may not be finished like in early afternoon like we typically are, uh, but we will complete those lessons. I feel like it's a skill that um, she needs to learn, especially um, as she goes goes off into the real world she is going to be held accountable uh, on her job just accountable just everywhere to a uh, complete task and um, I definitely want to teach her that um, at an early age I really want to teach her that discipline and I feel like uh, by holding her accountable to complete her homeschooling work even when she has hard days it's just a life lesson that's important to me for all of my kiddos and like I said while I feel like this skill um, definitely can't be practiced until Till they are a little bit older I still feel like this skill is very beneficial in my homeschool something else that I do in my homeschool that is pretty unpopular is that even when we are on our uh, weeks breaks in our homeschool we still follow our same routine and what I mean by that is that my kiddos even though we are on like a week break they still have the same bedtime we still wake up around the same time uh, the time where we typically will do like our formal curriculum um, I won't allow them to like watch TV have their technology time early um, they will do something hands-on and educational for Christmas a lot of my family members got um, my oldest daughter in particular a lot of like um, stem kits and art kits and things like that so uh, instead of us doing our formal curriculum during that time uh, my oldest daughter will pick out one of those kits that she got over um, Christmas and for her birthday and she will work on that she will do some drawing she will do anything like that she wants to uh, to entertain herself uh, while still maintaining our same routine we will we'll typically have lunch around the same 
same time. We'll do read alouds and bedtime the same time. So when it comes back to us starting off our next six week term, we necessarily didn't go completely off of our routine and it allows us to like ease back into our homeschool routine. The only thing that we're doing is we're adding in our curriculum because we um, still did like our you know typical flow outside of the formal books is what I'm saying. And it's very beneficial and it's very helpful in my homeschool. Even throughout the summer, you guys, uh, while we may wake up later and go to bed a little bit later, we still follow the same like rhythm and routine. So when it is time for us to start uh, kick back our school year, I feel like um, ever since I started doing that, I never really had like hard transitions in starting back. Now, I, I definitely felt tired in starting back our homeschool, you know, while we're picking up all the books all over again. I did feel tired and fatigued after our first week back, uh, but I never felt like we were just all over the place as far as like our routine. And I really feel like by keeping a consistent routine in our home, even during our off uh, periods, it definitely is very beneficial. Now, the last unpopular thing that I do in my homeschool that I really haven't mentioned yet on my channel, but I am going to mention it now, and I don't know if anyone has noticed it, but uh, this year in particular, I have um, decided, or not really just me, me and my husband, we decided in our homeschool that even though we are Christians, we have decided to use secular curriculum for uh, at least our core in our homeschool. Now, I can make a separate video if you you guys want to know all of the reasons why uh, we have chosen to use secular curriculum in our homeschool as a Christian family. Um, if you want to know more details, just let me know in the comment section down below. But I'm not too sure if any of you guys have noticed um, over the past years that I have been homeschooling, I have stopped using less and less um, Christian curriculum. Uh, right now, the only Christian curriculum that I am using is our uh, Rod and Staff Building English series is the only one that I am using. Other than that, all the other curriculums that I am using for my kiddos is either completely sec secular or neutral. And um, I actually prefer it that way. Um, one of the main reasons why I do prefer it that way is because I really feel like we are diving in deeper into our specific, you know, uh, religion and our specific devotions and biblical discernment outside of our curriculum. And I feel like we're going deeper. Um, I feel like I did depend a lot on my religious curriculum to do uh, all of the work for me. And um, that's just one of my reasons. Like I said, you guys, I can make a separate video if you want to know all of the reasons why I have chosen in our homeschool to use secular curriculums. Um, I definitely will talk more about it because this is something I am passionate about, um, especially now seeing the difference between using, um, at least starting off our homeschool year, we were using all Christian curriculum to now using um, mostly secular. So you guys, these are all of the unpopular things that I do in my homeschool. Let me know in the comment section down below if you do some of these unpopular things. If not, just uh, let's just chat it up like I said before. So thank you guys so much for watching and I look forward to seeing everybody in my next one. Bye.